Hey, everybody. It's Jonah Lupton, your host of the Startup Sense podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Once again, we're bringing you a great episode. Uh, Today on the phone, I have Eric Groves. He is the co-founder of a company called Alignable, based out of Boston. They've raised about $13 million, about 20 employees. And what they do is they uh, they kind of bring networking online for small business owners. And we're going to talk about all that in a second. But first, let me introduce Eric. Eric, how are you? I'm doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me on the call. Absolutely, man. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, before we talk about Alignable, tell us about yourself. Uh, let's see. I grew up in Boston. Uh, spent a lot of time in the Midwest, um, New York, Texas, Maryland, before ending up back here in Boston. Uh, background is uh, really in finance and marketing. Uh, started out on the the big side of things with uh, time spent at Citicor, Southwestern Bell, now AT and T, um, and Info USA on the data side. And um, you know, there I was doing a lot of mergers and acquisitions work, but really picked up my first operational experience running divisions at Info USA, right when we were licensing um, their data file to uh, internet companies. So early on in the Al Gore stage of the internet, uh, left. For a startup in the early 90s uh, that was doing local search using data to really um, create a very um, unique local search experience, uh, we ended up getting acquired by Alta Vista. Um, you may remember the mountains. Uh, and then after spending a year or so at Alta Vista, left to be on the founding uh, executive team really at Constant Contact. And there spent the better part of 10 years Um building out the uh, go-to-market strategy for Constant Contact, where we grew uh, the company basically from zero to uh, 400,000 businesses, 200 million in revenue, took it public, um, had an awesome run there. And then um, I left there in in 2011, uh, spent some time really talking to small business owners and was introduced to my co-founder, Venkat Krishnamurthy. And uh, together we co-founded Alignable in 2012 um, and, uh, the rest is history, I guess, as they say. Cool. Um, uh, good story. Uh, so you've been in Boston for a while now, worked for some great companies. Now tell us what exactly Alignable does. Well, uh, Alignable is really founded around a, a pretty simple belief that small business owners are much stronger working together, uh, than going it alone. Um, we've built a platform that literally unites business owners, within their communities uh, across industries. So businesses, a cupcake store owner in Tampa, Florida can talk to another one in Topeka, Kansas, Um, and around topics of interest. So if I'm interested in learning more about how to use Facebook to market my business, I can talk to businesses across North America um, and learn from them. Uh, So basically what Alignable does is unlocks access uh, to referral opportunities um, and things that enable business owners to gain greater, better competitive advantage uh, simply by building a network. Uh, if you think about what LinkedIn did for professionals searching for a job, you know, way back when I was coming out of college, we looked to connect with prospective employers with a cover letter and a resume. Uh, later, uh, Monster came along and aggregated all that information to make it much easier to search. Um, but LinkedIn's platform really opened up the network, revolutionizing the professional career marketplace. So if you use that as an analogy, you know, prior to Alignable, business owners would, the only way they could connect, um, and you think about their biggest competitive advantages around how they acquire customers, it's all about word of mouth referrals. Well, word of mouth is nothing more than words, the things you want said about you and mouths which means is a network. So you need a network. So they get the value in having a network, but the way that they had to do it was much like a cover letter and a resume. I mean, they basically will join a, a group that meets locally, whether it's a BNI or a chamber and, you know, they'll go there and they'll hope to meet the people that could help them with their business. And sometimes it works out, but many times it doesn't. And it's a very big time investment to, you know, tee yourself up once a week at seven o'clock in the morning Um, to go meet with a bunch of other business owners. So what we basically did was unlocked all that opportunity by simply creating an online free network where business owners can go and build those connections of trust with the other businesses in the community that they want to work with. So businesses join, make connections, recommend the businesses that they'd refer customers to and vice versa. And through those connections and those recommendations, they build really strong relationships that open up opportunities for 
uh, new customers or finding employees or simply trying to figure out how to get a sign approved in the town. Um, so it's across the board. Now, when you guys started this, were you focused on any particular industry or, I mean, you're in Boston, so I assume you started in the city of Boston and grew out from there, but maybe talk about your, your early strategy and then how it's changed over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, it actually started off in our hometown, Ben Cat and my hometown, um, in Acton, Massachusetts, uh, literally bringing business owners together. Um, and what we'd find is, you know, they're business owners that knew of each other and we knew what they were both strong in because we'd sort of built relationships with both of them. And we'd bring them into a room and we'd introduce them to each other and we'd just share a couple of facts about the businesses. So the very first ones that we did were, were with a guy named Tim Bush, who runs Colonial Spirits in Acton, and Willa Breeze, who runs uh, Kitchen Outfitters, a kitchen store. And, you know, we talked about the fact that they're, they were literally, um, you know, um, no more than a half a mile apart from each other. Uh, the fact that 80% of their customers typically come from a five mile radius. And so that means they share a lot of the same customers. And yet what they did was they gave me their email list because I'd been in constant contact for many years. I said, why don't you give me your email list before we do this? And I'm going to do some data matching for you. And they both had lists of about 4,000 names of Jeez. customers uh, nearby. And when you match those two lists, there were only seven names that overlapped. And three of them were employees at constant contact. So when you think about that, you think about the opportunity of two business owners in, in very similar businesses, right? They're both serving business to consumers. Each has reached to 4,000 local consumers, and yet the overlap rate between those two businesses lists is literally, you know, one, two, three, four type of, um, you know, count. Um, you realize the opportunity if these people just got to know each other and could work with each other to co-market, to, um, you know, help each other drive each other business. And so that's sort of where it started, um, very much hands-on, very much face-to-face, and then we've, we've basically um, replicated that through technology on the platform. Um, so it's kind of like Main Street Online. Now, are you or your co-founder technical people? Did you build the first version of the product yourselves or did you guys hire? Um, well, if my co-founder heard me talking about being technical, he'd, he'd probably laugh. He's the technical <laughs> brain power in the, in the, in the partnership. Um, he... Uh, sort of has made a career revolutionizing industries, um, came to uh, Stanford University to get his PhD. And while he was there, he got an Academy Award for uh, 3D graphics software that he built that was used in uh, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and a whole bunch of other movies. Um, and uh, then after that, he was, uh, while he was finishing up his uh, PhD, he co-founded Invisalign, uh, the braces company. And you think about that problem of, you know, people have been using metal braces forever, having to go back and forth to the dentist. And he just looked at it and said, well, that's just a math problem. Um, we can solve that through technology and creating these inserts. And Invisalign was born with two um, uh, colleagues from Stanford's Graduate School of Business. Um, and then from there went on and did it, you know, has done it many, many times um, in a lot of different industries. And um, he had left his company um, w around the same time as I had and was working on um, a mobile application and talking to business owners about the mobile application. And one of them, I uh, acting Acton said to him, you know, Venkat, this is really interesting. You know, it was basically the ability to push a mobile ad uh, to a customer walking by in the street. And the, the right. business said, Venkat, this is really interesting. Um, I'm never going to buy it. Um, but I know you're also talking to the guy across the street. I was wondering if you could just introduce me to him. And, you know, Venkat kind of looked at him and was like, well, why won't you cross the road and just introduce yourself? And, uh, it turns out that day we had, it was the first time we met over lunch and he was asking, he's like, you're, you're Mr. Small Business. Why won't the business owner cross the road? <laughs> uh, and it actually turns out there's a real logical reason. And that is that, Small business owners are inundated with people trying to sell them stuff. They get, on average, roughly seven unsolicited phone calls or outbound people walking in the door every week. And it always starts off with, is the business owner here? Right. The right. last thing that they want to do is actually walk across the street not knowing who the business owner is and, and walk into someone else's store and say, hey, is the business owner here? <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, it turns out that something needs, something or someone is needed to break the ice. 
and make that connection so the person can walk across the street and meet that other business owner. And it turns out in many cases, they break that ice on Alignable um, by simply reaching out and say, hey, I love your business. I shop there all the time. I'd love to meet you. And the business owner on the other said, uh, and says, oh my gosh, stop by any time. I'd love to meet you. It's Joe, you know, tell him, you know, tell my employees that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm expecting you to stop by. And that's all it takes. And then they're off to the races. So it's pretty cool to see that happening, you know, every day across the platform. This is Jonah Lupton, founder of the Lupton Group and host of the Startup Sense podcast. Are you struggling to find the right tech team to build your company's website or mobile app? Maybe you've developed a product but need help with your go-to-market strategy, including branding and marketing. Well, stop worrying because my team at the Lupton Group can assist you with all of those needs. We specialize in helping entrepreneurs and startups of all sizes launch and grow their businesses. For a free consultation, you can email me at jonahlupton at gmail.com or visit our website at luptongroup.co. So how big is the Alignable community right now across the country? I mean, how many different areas or towns are you in? How many businesses are signing up on a daily basis? Sure. Um, so we're we're in pretty much every nook and cranny you can imagine. Over 10,000 communities, uh, hundreds of thousands of users, um, literally signing up thousands every day. Um, it's all viral. Uh, you know, people, businesses join um, and then invite other business owners they know and want to work with. And that's sort of how we've grown from from our the earliest days in 2014 when we launched. Um, but that's you know it's pretty much all across North America, U.S. and Canada. So talk to us about how how did you set up that that viral effect? What incentive is there for business owners after they sign up to invite their friends or neighbors to join the platform? Do they get a link? Um, you know, do they you know add those person's email addresses and then you guys blast out an email? Uh, what what was the I don't know, what was the strategy and how did it all come together? That's a great question. You know, it really, it does come down to virality is all based on trust. So you have to bring the users onto the platform, show them the value that they'll get by making connections, and then give them paths where they can go to invite the people that they want to work with. Um, so what we like to do is try and get people on board. They're typically coming in sponsored by another business. We like to show them the value of that at first initial relationship and say, hey, did you know that guy that sponsored you is pretty active on Facebook? Um, you know, if you're looking at trying to figure out ways to to um, improve your Facebook activity, you might want to talk to this guy or, you know, he looks like he shares similar customers to you or she um, has a network of 20 people that you might be able to meet. So by sort of unlocking that um, opportunity with that one business and showing them things about someone they probably already know pretty well that they didn't know, um, you know, oh, I didn't know that person was good on Twitter. Um, those type of things um, get people excited to find out what they don't know about other people in their network. And they naturally um, just use their email lists uh, to invite people um, that may be in their inbox or address book that they never even knew were a small business owner. Uh, we had one woman come on board because uh, there's a directory of all the businesses in your community. And um, she was looking through the directory. and She's like, oh, my gosh, I've been working out literally next to this woman for four months. I had no idea she had this business. And um, now they're working together. So you never know where you're going to find somebody and where you're going to untap an opportunity. So, I mean, other than the the viral component of of everything you just talked about, have you guys done any outbound marketing strategies? And if so, what what channels or you know, what what aspects of that strategy have been the most successful? Yeah, our primary um, external uh, acquisition vehicle is really through content. Okay. So on the platform, we have businesses asking each other very interesting questions. Uh, I'm a florist. I'm struggling to try and keep my business alive. Does anybody have any ideas on how I can meet other business owners? Um, and what you find is people, um, business owners want to help each other out. And so the answers to those questions are phenomenal. Um, we also ask businesses to rate and review uh, brands that they use, everything from Yelp to Groupon to Intuit, Constant Contact. Um, we collect that information and it's available to our users to kind of learn from each other. Um, and, you know, they rate, they have the ability to rate and review Yelp, which is kind of, you know, cathartic and fun. Um, but also very um, uh, eye-opening for them to learn from each other, you know, how do you do well with Yelp? 
um, what is possible um, with Groupon and the like. So um, all of that is happening on the platform and it generates an enormous amount of really interesting content, uh, content that we put out um, a lot of it on um, a white website that we call Main Street Insights, um, which is uh, indexed and you know crawled and over time will continue to grow in traffic, but it's really unlike where you see with an Amex open forum or you know one of the branded um, uh, media sites, this is truly a destination where small business owners can get answers from other small business owners rather than you know some thought leader just pontificating about something. Uh, actually just, um, so it's pretty I unique. Googled it. So so uh, yeah, you type in Main Street Insights in Google, and it takes you to alignable.com backslash insights. So that's so that's obviously run by you guys then. Yep, that's us. Cool. And more importantly, that's the content from small businesses helping each other. Yeah, that's exciting. That's that is definitely valuable intel for sure. Um, how do you how do you prevent any of your users from being too spammy? I guess you know soliciting too much business from everybody? <laughs> um, well, it's a great question. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, we allow you to build your network, right? So you get to pick who you connect with and who you recommend. Uh, and those are the people that, you know, have sort of the free ability to interact with you. Um, we also allow you to connect and, and interact with people that are very close by. So think of it as um, if you're in Boston, it's, you know, people within a half a mile. If you're in Acton, Mass, um, it may be three miles or five miles. Um, and it turns out that, you know, 90 plus percent of the population, when they're dealing with people that are literally within their community, um, they tend to behave very well. Um, because the last thing that you want to do as a small business owner is tarnish your brand um, by doing something publicly that makes you look like you're not, you know, someone to be trusted. Yeah, right. From time to time, we'll get people that'll get on there and get too aggressive. I mean, we've had an insurance agent in Topeka, Kansas jump on and, you know, brilliantly basically introduce themselves to the community by saying, you know, hey, if you have any one of your employees using their personal vehicle to deliver your product to a customer, here are two things you should think about in your insurance policy. That started an awesome conversation. The guy's now the turn to person to, you know, for insurance advice in that community out of the gates, you know, doing great. Um, another insurance agent in a different part of the community is like, you know, jumps on and goes, hey, I'm the best insurance agent in town. I got the best rates. If you're not using me, you're crazy. Um, and that guy got crickets. Um, <laughs> and, um, we also have a feedback mechanism where if somebody in the community, you know, wants to, they can flag it and say, you know, this is inappropriate. It's, and it's, it's remarkable. I mean, the small business owners jump on and say, hey, look, this isn't that kind of community. This is where we help each other. Um, so either self-correct or you might want to leave. Um, and it's beautiful. So, you know, in rare circumstances, we, you know, we have to take action, but typically the community uh, takes care of that on their own. Cool. Um, what's been the fundraising strategy for the company? You guys have raised about 13 million across a few different rounds. I know you mentioned in our pre-call that the first round was kind of friends and family. So yep. when, did you, when did you raise the first money? And then kind of how did it uh, correspond with the life cycle of, you know, of building the first version of the product? Did you guys raise money before you started building or build first, then raise some, and then, you know, raise, raise more money to keep growing? Uh, great question. So we started out, you know, probably for the first six months or so, uh, Venkat and I, you know, doing this, bringing business owners together, just looking them in the eyes and all of that sort of effort was self-funded because we wanted to prove to us that the, the pain was real and the opportunity was enormous. Um, once we had kind of convinced ourselves of that and we wanted to start building a prototype, um, we did a friends and family round, uh, literally with friends and family. Um, and, uh, we're able to use that to create a prototype, um, and to scale it actually into a product. Um, once we had that sort of, you know, version a of the product, we went and did a series a round. Uh, the series a was re led by a guy by the name of Bob Chukowski at, at Saturn partners. Um, Saturn was one of the early investors in constant contact. They really understand the small business space and Bob in particular, um, and we in included some other, um, great firms like Boston Seed, Crunch Fund, 
Next View. Um, we're one of the partners there. Literally was one of the early guys at LinkedIn. Um, and then we also added Scott Booth uh, from Lead Edge, um, who is kind of well known for taking an early and pretty significant investment stake in Alibaba. Wow. Um, and he, he's sort of always looking for unique network um, opportunities. And he tracked us down through uh, one of his associates, Matt Schneider, who uh, tracked us down. He's like, I want to invest in you guys. Um, so that was sort of our Series A. Um, and we used that money to really build uh, the business and get it scaling um, into the tens of thousands of businesses. And then um, we did um, last year a Series B um, that was led by Naveen Chada at Mayfield in California. Uh, at that time, we really recognized um, that there was significant knowledge pool on the West Coast relating to building incredible network marketplaces. Uh, and we really wanted to find a firm that had you know, knowledge and insight and access to those people um, that also had a really good understanding for the value of building data graphs. Um, and so um, we uh, seeked out uh, the folks at uh, Mayfield um, and have an incredible partner there. We recently added another partner to the team, uh, Rajiv uh, Batra, who's phenomenal on the data side. So we feel very lucky uh, in the firms that we've been able to work with because not only do they get small business and marketplaces, but understand data. Um, and then most recently this past summer, we were approached by Recruit Holdings uh, to make a strategic investment, and we're thrilled to add them to the mix. Um, they pretty much dominate the tech space in Japan. Um, own a, uh, they're a huge global company. Um, they own companies like Indeed, um, who's you know someone that where we look to helping small businesses find jobs. Um, you know, we're going to tap those people at Indeed and and see what we can do to work with those folks. So it was sort of a great win-win uh, to bring them on board this past summer. So that's sort of how we funded it today. Awesome. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure you guys will have to raise money again in another, you know, 18 to 24 months, most likely. Yeah, that's the way, I mean, the way it works, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Once you start, you can't stop. But I mean, that's not, not a bad thing as long as you keep hitting your milestones. Um, Absolutely. How many small businesses in the country right now? Um, you know, depending on how you look at it, there's somewhere between 20 and, and 30, 40 million. Wow. Um, you know, half of them are, are sole proprietors. Uh, which means they're really operating in isolation. So right. great like, people like that have to platform. Um, and, um, you know, it's 50% of the U.S. GDP flowing through small businesses. And when you think about it, without a digital mile of connectivity at the end, which is what we're really becoming, all of the things that small businesses do um, or need are terribly inefficient whether you're trying to sell to small business or you're trying to work between small businesses, without that network connection, it's terribly efficient, inefficient. And by building that, we unlock all those, in, in, you know, we, we change those inefficiencies into efficiencies. And, you know, in that space, we'll, you know, look to, to generate the revenue for the business. So talk to us about kind of, you know, the first or second version of Alignable um, what was one feature that you guys built into it that turned out to be completely unnecessary that never really got used? And maybe maybe one feature that you guys didn't put in there that you wish you had. That's a that's a fascinating one. You know, it's kind of funny. We often joke about it is, you know, people go, oh, you're kind of like LinkedIn plus Match.com for small business. <laughs> Um, and I guess, you know, when hey, we, they're, both, they're both billion dollar companies. So yeah, so we'll take that. Right. Um, so when we look at the opportunity and we looked on early on and we, you know, literally took, put these two business owners in a room together and they went to immediately how they could be marketing together. Um, we, we looked at it and we go, oh my gosh, look at the opportunity here just in marketing alone. And so in the first version of our product, we really focused very heavily on co-marketing. Well, in the dating world, that's kind of like starting with marriage. <laughs> right. Um, and what we realized is we had to kind of go all the way back to even before dating, trying to figure out who you should be dating. Yeah, right. And yeah. so as the product has evolved, it's really kind of morphed its way back to, hey, who do you want to get to know? Who do you already know? And who do you already refer your customers to? And who would you like to know? And let us help you find a path to those people. It's not 
Like LinkedIn is very much about quantity of connections. Alignable is really about quality of connections. Who are the 10, 20 business owners that you really should know because they're the ones that hold the greatest opportunity for you as a business owner? Um, and so those are the things that, you know, where we started off in way too far down in the life cycle, I guess. And, you know, the, the features that we're adding now are really about simplicity of building um, a trusted relationship. And, you know, one of the things we do now is we provide them with a very simple way to just say, hey, I'd love to go grab coffee and talk to you and learn about your business. Um, very simple, one-to-one, -one, make the connection, go grab a cup of coffee. Super for the local coffee shop too. <laughs> how, do you, how do you guys end up making money? I mean, is it through, is it going to be through local ads? Is, is there going to be kind of that recruiting component that LinkedIn ended up adding that turned out to be a gold mine? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you guys think about this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, what, the easiest way to think about it is when you, you know, A, do you believe a network should exist because there's enormous inefficiencies in the way small business owners have to do business? Um, we very adamantly say yes. Uh, then if you build that network um, and you create enormous efficiencies, then can you take a piece of the action when you make something more efficient. And if you look at LinkedIn's revenue, you know, 80% of their revenue really comes from helping drive efficiencies through their marketplace, whereas only a small percentage of it comes from adding a premium service and charging people for it. Right. So when you ask yourself, okay, 50% of the US GDP flowing through small business and it's bro a lot of it's broken, what is broken that you could potentially help fix? Um, helping them find employees, helping them find real estate, um, you know, helping uh, them get new access to customers in a much more efficient way. Um, all of those things are things that we can monetize. Um, but right now we're focused on how do we build the marketplace in terms of capturing, you know, millions of small businesses across North America and then globally. Um, how do we keep them highly engaged, which means we're, we're helping them find value through those relationships. And then we're highly confident that we can monetize after that. And that's one of the, you know, the pleasures of bringing on these guys from the West Coast in Mayfield. Um, they've literally done this many, many times, and they understand when is the right time to sort of layer on the revenue model and when is the right time to just focus on growth. And right now we're just focused on growth. So you're about 20 people right now. Um, I mean, kind of expanding upon what you just said, uh, what positions are you guys currently hiring for? Um, you know, we're always looking for great development talent, you know, people that really want to build something big and sustainable. Um, there aren't a lot of network marketplaces being built in Boston. Um, so we're very unique from that standpoint. It's a small team. It's a mix of fairly senior folks. We've got a bunch of awesome co-ops from Northeastern. Um, their program and developers is just spectacular, and we've had a lot of luck there. Um, but, you know, the company is, is sort of 60% developers and product people, um, and 30% you know, are on the marketing and customer success side. Um, and then I guess you'd call me the overhead. Um, and that, that sort of makes up the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely sounds like you're going to be adding more growth marketing people probably in the yep. next year or so. Absolutely. So, I mean, right now you're, you know, adding thousands of businesses a day, um, you know, say, I don't know, it's kind of hard to put a number on that for a month or a year. But, I mean, how do you take this thing to, you know, five or 10 million small businesses? Um, well, I think it, at the core of it is you have to provide something that small business owners get an enormous amount of value out of. Um, the sort of uh, benefit to their investment of time needs to be very, very high because they're very b busy people. Um, when you do that, it turns out that small businesses are incredibly loyal and viral when they find something unique that really helps them succeed. Uh, and that's driven our growth to date. We believe that will continue to drive our growth into the future. Um, and then, you know, we're starting to get to the scale where some of the large players who have reached to small businesses want to partner with us. Um, and we tend to focus on those with very high net promoter scores. Uh, we created this thing called the SMB Trust Index, which is actually pretty interesting. We, we enable our, our users to 
say on a zero to 10 scale using the net promoter score, how likely you are to recommend, you know, MailChimp or Constant Contact or QuickBooks to another business owner on that zero to 10 scale. And um, what we've done is we've turned that into an index of, you know, who are the most trusted brands in small business and the least trusted brands in small business. And um, what we do is we look at that list and the people at the top of that list, and those are people we really want to partner with um, because they're the most trusted ones out there. Um, the ones at the bottom of the list, you know, less likely so. Are you able to mention a couple that they're that's yeah, I mean, they're really on our website. It's just if you just type um, if you look for on that Main Street Insights, if you just click on the SMB Trust Index, you'll see them all there. Um, you can see them from the top all the way to the bottom. Cool. Uh, and it's information we push out quarterly. We'll probably announce the fourth quarter. We're up to almost um, 80 brands, I think, now for the fourth quarter. We'll announce that probably by the end of January. Um, and um, they'll be adding even more brands to the mix. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I just, at the top, I mean, you have names like Amazon and, uh, you know, Twitter, Apple, WordPress, mm -hmm. et cetera. So good names. Um so since you started this company a couple of years back, I guess technically it was 2012, but it sounds like you guys yep. uh, didn't, you know, you didn't launch the website in 2012. You launched it in what, 2014? Um, well, we were publicly available January of 2014, yeah, with a couple hundred businesses around Boston, and it's just spread virally since then. Okay, so going on three years now, what have you learned that's, you know, made you a better CEO? Wow. Um you know, a lot of the things that I learned from the early days at, at, at uh, Constant Contact of, you know, it's all about the people you hire and how great uh, an experience you give your customers. Um, and those are the two things that we keep coming back to. Um, we've got an awesome team um, at building the product and serving the customers. And, you know, the product um, is good. Um, it will be great. Uh, and a lot of that is how do you take friction out of the equation and how do you make, you know, deliver value to your user? And that's really what we stay focused on. Um, we do, uh, be true to the fact that we want to help small businesses be successful. Um, and, uh, we don't want to just try and sell them something, um, that, uh, you know, try and convince them that they need it. Um, we want to actually have them telling each other, hey, this is really helping my business succeed. And we feel that that's the best way to grow. So that's what we're focused on. Cool. Um, yeah. I mean, you're surrounded by a great group of investors. So this might be a tough question to answer. And I feel bad putting you on the spot. But do you have a favorite or you know single best piece of advice you've gotten from any one of those investors? <laughs> oh, I love that. Chada when I we first met him at Mayfield and he said so tell me is this a vitamin or a painkiller I was like that is a really interesting question and it's like this is an absolute painkiller and, and you just smiled and he's like yeah you're right it is um you know and a vitamin is something that you know makes you feel good but you can go a day without it um, if you're in pain, you know, you may, may take it, you might not take it, but if it's a painkiller, um, it's, it's something that you absolutely need in order to be successful and survive. And, um, so I think that was probably one of the most interesting questions we got along the way. Um, I still use that all the time. Um, and you know, I think the other thing is when people say to me, you know, what's it like to be an entrepreneur? And I, I say to them, Hey, you know, did you love playing shoots and ladders when you were a kid? Um, and, uh, cause if you did, that's what it's like, right? I mean, being an entrepreneur is the highs of highs and the lows of lows and having a really great partner, uh, and a co-founder that you can share those with and who can pick you up when you're down and, and enjoy the high ride when you're there, um, is what it's all about. And if, you know, if that's what you love and that's what you're excited about, then it's, there's no better job in the world. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I heard that analogy, the vitamin or the, or the painkiller, uh, heard it the other day on a podcast, and it's something I'm going to use too because it is a yeah, good one. It makes me think. Um, what are some of the metrics that you look at on a daily or weekly basis to try to determine the, you know, the health and growth rate of the company? I mean, you don't have to talk about financials, but sure. is there anything else that you like to look at, or any any particular software services that you use to help identify those those metrics? 
Oh, we use tons of different applications, um, you know, uh, for internal communication, Slack, um, uh, Jira, and uh, Atlassian's entire suite has been phenomenal. Um, you know, we, we do track a lot of metrics. Um, we look at engagement um, on a cohort basis. We look at engagement um, through different uh, hook loops. Um, you know, I'm a, there are two books that everybody reads when they come on board. Um, the first one is a book called Hooked by Nir Yao, um, which is a fascinating, simple book, but it really talks about, you know, how do you build um, software that really creates a behavioral desire to be a part of it. Um, it's a it's a great read. And then the other one that we uh, that everyone takes a look at is is the one about platform revolution, um, which is all about how do you create positive network effects and eliminate negative network effects um, to actually drive growth. Um, and so you know those two things um, are, are things we we look to also. Um, but yeah, I mean that's it's kind of us in a nutshell. What, what have you guys done to increase engagement? Because, I mean, I can see where that's an important metric for sure is how often are people coming back to the website and then how long are they staying on it? Who are they engaging with? How many people are they engaging? Um, but what have you been able to add in there to increase that engagement number? Well, that hook really speaks to, you know, how do you drive engagement? Because it's not about um, a trigger action. It's about trigger action, reward, investment. Um, where you're rewarding people for engaging in a way that makes them feel excited and you're giving them investments that gives them the next taste of that reward. Um, and, th and through that, you're able to create a real engaging user experience. Um, so, you know, that's sort of the key mechanism for driving engagement. Um, the messaging between businesses is uh, one that they truly love. You know, they love to kind of communicate back and forth with their network. Um, we allow them to share events that they're doing, promotions that they're doing, um, featuring products and services. And each time they add something to their profile, uh, it gets shared with their network and available to the entire community to see. Um, and so when people see it and comment and like on it, um, that triggers them to, to get sort of an awesome email about, you know, the work that you put in is actually generating a response from people and they're they're, you know, responding to it in a, in a real favorable way. Um, and that brings people back. Um, so, you know, a lot of it is designed around that whole hook loop philosophy. Cool. Um, a couple last questions here. Uh, you know, a big part of the audience are aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, people looking to start their own businesses, you know, in the next year, uh, mm -hmm. what advice would you want to share with them? You know, that you've kind of learned that you've learned, you know, along your journey that you could, you know, if there's one, one or two lessons that you've learned that you could share, what would they be? Um, you know, I think part of it is really spending time face to face with your prospective customer before you even start thinking about how to solve the problem um, to make sure that the problem is real. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I talk to early entrepreneurs and I, you know, I did a bunch of mentoring um, here at Techstars uh, a number of years back and you know, you'd hear people say, well, here's the problem that I'm solving. And, you know, the first logical question is to that is, OK, does the customer know the problem exists? Right. And, you know, sometimes you'd hear, yeah, absolutely. And here's the data to support it. And other times you'd hear they don't yet know yet, but um, it's there and it's real. Well, if somebody doesn't feel pain um, and you're trying to solve that pain that they don't even feel, you're in for a real tough schlog um, to get there. And then the next, you know, real question is, you know, what's your go-to-market strategy? Um, you know, reaching and selling to small businesses is very difficult. You know, we're changing all of that because we're, the reason that it's difficult is there's no network um, where you can spread virally a product. Um, but, you know, once you've built that network, that'll change. But for right now, it's still very hard because small business owners are literally everywhere, but they don't congregate someplace. Um, so your go to market strategy, if it's, you know, we're going to do it all through PPC or whatever, um, 
you know, you got to validate that a little bit. Um, and David Scott has a really beautiful blog called Four Entrepreneurs that talks about all of the metrics that you need to think about as you build your funnel. Um, but there's a lot of great resources out there. There is. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of uh, David's blog as well. Uh, and you're right. I mean, a company like yours, you know, PPC and SEO alone would not have gotten you, you know, to where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we don't do any of that, really. Right, right. I mean, you. Yeah. Be, I mean, that's just that's a tough way to to reach business owners. You know, they're not they're not clicking on ads. They're not looking. You know, they're not on on Google searching for. Well, I mean, I guess they're searching for other businesses, but you'd spend a lot of time and money building an SEO strategy. Yeah. The local. Uh, anything expensive. else you wanted to mention before we wrap up? Um, I typically, you know, the, the last two questions I usually ask are. Uh, if you could be mentored by anybody, who would it be? I mean, I know you already have some great mentors and investors around you, but um, is there someone that comes to mind that's, that's not currently in your network? Um, mentor. Um, hmm. That's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> It's always a tricky yeah, one. I mean, it, it's it's kind of funny because you, you know, as you bump into people, you, you certainly pick up an, a, a nugget of knowledge from each person you meet. Um, and uh, that, that helps you um, uh, really find, find solutions. Um, uh, but. Um, yeah, but we, huh. get, we get, we get the typical. Yeah, Elon I think if there was one Jeff person Bezos. that I really, I look at and go, that is that is the the Howard Hughes of today that I would love to pick the mind of. It would be Elon Musk. Right. Um, okay. I think that guy just um, the way he's playing chess um, is uh, is pretty incredible. And doing it in multiple industries that have nothing yeah. to do with each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only other person I've ever met that was like that was Benioff. Uh, he thinks the same way. Um, and he's, he's brilliant. Um, and, uh, was fortunate to meet him and spend a little bit of time with him. So I, I guess if I had to pick two people to go to dinner with, it would be those two. That'd be one hell of a dinner. It would be. Um, I'll come? ask this. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, if, if that dinner ever happens, I want an invite. Deal. Um, this question, I probably know the answer to it, but I'll throw it out there anyways. It's always kind of fun to get the reaction is. Um, in three years, do you guys think you'll be an independent company or you'll be acquired by someone? I hope we're independent. Um, yeah. I think it's a big enough opportunity. Um, and, you know, there are other big companies that are passionate about small business in the way that we're passionate about it. Um, but I, you know, I hope that um, we can be independent and and be that entity that becomes the LinkedIn slash match.com for small business owners across the globe. Um, it's certainly going to keep us busy for the next three plus years. That's for sure. No doubt about that. Well, it looks like you guys are off to a wonderful start. Thanks. Uh, kudos on what you guys have built thus far. And I actually signed up this morning, so um, I'll be diving in and, and seeing what kinds of connections I can get out of it. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Let us know how it goes. Absolutely. Will do. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Great guest. i um, glad you're from Boston and, uh, you know, feel free to come back anytime and give us some updates on what you guys are doing. Awesome. My pleasure. Okay. We'll talk take to you care. soon. All you right. Take care. Bye-bye.